Hello, my name is Randall Lavers, and this is the first tutorial for my book, Introduction to Note Reading for Guitarists. This book is published by Productions Doze, and you will find a link to the book in the comments section below. It was released in November 2021, and has sold close to 100 copies to date in the United States and in Europe. So the question is, what does this book do? This book provides a basic blueprint for learning the symbols that make up our guitar alphabet. This is a workbook you use alongside a method and not by itself. We need two types of learning activities to become proficient note readers. One type of activity is basically a phonic style approach, which introduces us to the symbols of guitar notation, where we take a look at each symbol individually and then learn to fuse them together with other symbols to create more complex musical ideas. The other type of activity is reading complete songs or melodies. Often this is overemphasized in early guitar instruction. And here what we do is we take music in its finished form, like a story in a book, where it's up to us to figure out how to break it down so that we, it will eventually sound like the song that we're trying to learn. This book introduces us to the symbols found in guitar notation. Each of the symbols are placed in a category and we go through a series of lessons that automatize the connection between what is read on the page and how it's reproduced on the guitar. So this book is made up of four chapters, melody, rhythm, harmony, and sound variation. Melody is the first chapter, as it is in most methods, so it's a very good starting, starting point. I want you to keep in mind before page 16, there's plenty of information on how to use this book, so take a peek at that. We begin with the bass octave. Bass octave encompasses all the scalar notes from low E, 6th string open, to what we call the high E, 4th string, 2nd fret. This will produce a Phrygian scale, which is used very often in flamenco music, and it sounds like this. instructions tell us to play these notes on the guitar, say the name of each note as you play it. I don't glance over this, I make sure all of my students do this activity. Sounds like this. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, high E actually. Making sure that we put the right finger in the right spot. We need to be able to play, perform this exercise from low to high, as I did right there, and from high to low. Saying the note every time. The material actually doesn't need to be, you know, fluent or even memorized. We just need to be able to get through it with relatively little confusion. Uh, this exercise actually challenges our focus, so you may have to eliminate any distractions that may be in the room if you can. Now we come to the first reading lesson of the book, which is page 18. If you're an instructor like I am, it's very important for you to be able to go through this material yourself within the time limit. The reason being is that you have to accurately assess the work of your students, and also you'll be able to give them some advice on how they can reach the goal for this page. So. Uh, stopwatch icon in the top right hand corner. This signifies that this is a time test. The goal for this exercise is to complete everything within 45 seconds as is written here on page 16. We use a stopwatch or a clock to find out if we reached our goal. In my private lessons I often use an app on my phone because it's convenient, but if you find yourself spending more time looking at the phone than playing the guitar, use a clock or a stopwatch instead. This lesson demonstrates that pitch can be notated in two different ways, by note name and by standard notation with fingerings. When you have a circle around the number, that means string, as right there. Sometimes there's a number next to it without a circle, and that is left hand fingering. 
And if you just have a string number and nothing else, that means that that string is open. So here's how I teach this page to my students. I uh, have my stopwatch ready. I let them know that I will clock it from the very first time that they read it. And I'm looking for their ability to flow through the material. Uh, I'm not judging the outcome. We're just going to document how long it takes for them to get through the assignment from beginning to end. And that's it. The student gets a second to glance over the page. Uh, they're allowed to prepare their fingers for the first note. I say, ready, set, go, and start the clock from the moment they play their very first note. Uh, when the page is complete, I stop the clock, write down the time in the right margin, and just let you know students will complete this the first time anywhere between one and a half and six minutes. My students realize that I'm not there to answer any questions while the clock is running. I get out of the way as much as possible, let them do their own work, and I encourage them along the way. Um, if the notes are correct, I just cycle through them. If a note is incorrect, I usually hit it twice, or I say, I want an A, if they're playing a B. If they just can't remember where the note is, I just calmly go back to page 17, show them where it is, but I do not stop the clock. If they've fallen out completely, lost all their concentration and everything, uh, I opt to stop the clock at the end of a column and I write the uh, time at below the, the bottom note. Once they can get that column going, then I try to have them do the whole page again. In between the times that I stop the clock, uh, I discuss with them one or two strategies that will help them uh, perform more accurately or quicker. Uh, I don't dwell too long. Uh, it's very important for them to get right back into the assignment again. And they'll notice the second time that they go through it that they're going to cycle through this much faster, which is super motivating for them. This book has been used for both one-on-one -on -one teaching as well as classroom settings, just to let you know. And once again, I have included a link to where you can purchase this book below. So, uh, best wishes and happy reading.